Welcome to the Harper Classroom. I'm Dr. Harper. In this Excel tutorial, I'll perform a time series decomposition using a blocking technique. So let's bring in Excel. I have a monthly time series with a seasonal component and a linear trend component. I'll perform a decomposition using blocking to estimate the parameters of the seasonal and trend components. So first, let's take the time series and block it. So you see we have five years worth of monthly data and let's control C copy this and bring this over here and let's paste it. Now blocking means we have five years worth of data one two three four five and we want every column to be a year and every row to be the month. So for the second year control shift down arrow let's bring this up to the second column which is the second year. For the third year let's bring this up And then the fourth year, control shift down arrow for the fourth column for the fourth year. And then for the fifth year, control shift down arrow. And there's our five years. And every column and every row is going to be a month. And so let's format this. Now every row in this table represents a monthly time series for that month over five years with a trend and seasonal component. But since the seasonal contribution is the same for that month and every year, we can estimate the seasonal trend for that month over five years. And so we will estimate the trend with a slope function where the known y's of the time series and the known x's will be the years and we want to freeze that F4 and that's the seasonal trend for that month. We copy it down we have the seasonal trend for every month. And then if we take the average this will be the seasonally adjusted trend. Notice that these seasonal trends are for a monthly time series from year to year. So they will be called the annual seasonal trend of the monthly time series. And the average 120 will be the seasonally adjusted annual trend for the monthly time series. So now we can use these to estimate our seasonal indexes. Our seasonal index will be the seasonal value divided by the seasonally adjusted value, but we want to freeze that F4 because we want the same seasonally adjusted value for all of our seasonal values. And then we copy that down and that represents our seasonal index for every month of the year. This table represents our seasonal time series. And let's let that justify this. And we can use our indexes to obtain our seasonally adjusted time series. Again, let's left justify. For the years, one, two, three, four, and five. Now the way I'm going to do this is add five columns, one, two, three, four, five, and then just copy over my indexes and I'll copy the actual values. Then copy these over. Now although this is not an elegant way to do this, I find this fast, easy, and it minimizes errors. So essentially what I want to do for the seasonally adjusted time series, that equals the seasonal value divided by the index and that's the value. And that's my seasonally adjusted time series. But then I can take that and copy that over and then copy it down. And there's my seasonally adjusted time series. So now to estimate the parameters of my trend component, I want the intercept and slope. For the seasonally adjusted monthly slope of our time series, we know the seasonally adjusted annual slope of a monthly time series is 120. So that's just going to be our annual slope divided by 12 months in a year. 
which will be 10. Now our intercept is going to be the average of all the y values, which are all of the time series, which are all of these. And from statistics we know we subtract the slope times the average of the x values. But since the x values range from 1 to 60, that it's going to be 60 plus 1 divided by 2. And that's the average of a series. So now that we have the estimates of the parameters of our trend and seasonal components, now we can use those to obtain our forecasts. So let's copy our values and let's bring them down and copy them down where we will use them to estimate our forecast. And let's go home, down arrow, paste, and paste the values. So here we have five years, so for year six, we're going to have the next 12 months. So we copy this down for 12 months. And our forecasts are going to equal our index times our intercept, and we want to freeze that, plus our slope, and we want to freeze that, times our time, which is our month, which is 61. And that, that will be our forecast. And we copy that down, and that's going to be the next 12 months of our forecast. So now let's come back to the top, and let's see what it looks like. So first let's plot our time series. Control shift down arrow. Insert. Recommended charts, we'll use just a blind plot for what we're doing here. And then let's add to that. Click Design. Select Data. Add. And the series values we want to add is our forecast. So let's come up here and control shift down arrow and down arrow again to get our forecast. OK. OK. And uh, so here we have our time series and then our forecast. So what we've done is block the data and from that estimate our indexes, seasonally adjust the data to estimate our trend, put them together to get our forecast. And that's how we decompose the data by blocking for forecasting. This has been the Excel tutorial Time Series Decomposition by Blocking. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.